Welcome to worship here at Wesley Memorial Church in High Point, North Carolina. We are so grateful for our television congregation. Thank you for taking time to worship with us today. Here we are in the season of Advent already, beginning a new Christian year, and it's during this season of Advent. We are preparing to make sure that we can celebrate Christmas when the gift of Christmas comes. So thank you for making this journey through Advent with us this year. Now, friends, let us worship God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, in your providence you made all ages a preparation for the kingdom of your Son. Make ready our hearts for the brightness of your glory and the fullness of your blessing in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Here we are in the season of Advent. Here we are on the second Sunday of the season of Advent. And this morning we're going to be looking at a text from the Hebrew prophet Micah. We're going to hear a text that was prophesied 700 years before the coming of Jesus Christ that tells us of the coming of this new ruler, the coming of this deliverer, the coming of Mashiach, the Messiah, who is to come and make all things new. The prophet Micah was living in that age when he was prophesying the destruction of both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. He lived through the destruction of Samaria, the northern kingdom, and he prophesied that eventually the southern kingdom too, the kingdom of Jerusalem, would be destroyed. But in the midst of all that chaos, Micah said that a new ruler would come one day. And this new ruler will come from a surprising place, a little village outside of Jerusalem, a little inconsequential village outside of Jerusalem. And from this little village outside of Jerusalem will come one who will sit on the throne of David. This one who will come from the little village of Bethlehem will come and deliver us from sin and self and bring into reality the kingdom of God in this world. This one who is coming to rule and reign as king will come from the little village about five miles outside of Jerusalem. It's a village that really has a slight history among the people of Israel, except that it is the little village where that unknown shepherd boy, David, was chosen to be the new king. And Micah is saying that at a point in the future, 700 years hence from the time of Micah, there would come one from that same little village who would rule and reign upon the throne of David. So I turn your attention to the Old Testament book of Micah. And I call your attention to this prophecy that was delivered 700 years before the birth of Christ. And I hope that you'll notice how much detail is given to us 700 years in advance of the coming of Jesus about who Jesus Christ is. So Micah chapter 5, I'll begin reading at verse 2. The prophet said, But you, O Bethlehem Ephratah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, God says, one who is to be a ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient of days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she, who is in labor, has given birth to this one. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And Micah concludes this section by saying, And he, and he, this one who is to come, shall be their peace. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So here in this text, we are told 700 years in advance that the Messiah would come from Bethlehem. The city of Bethlehem is a small city outside of Jerusalem. The name Bethlehem in Hebrew, Bethlehem, means house of bread. Isn't it interesting that he who comes among us as the very bread of life was born in a city named the house of bread. And this city, the house of bread, is a small village there. And most people would have imagined that nothing really tremendous could come out of that little village but that idea had changed when King David was found there living in that village. And there will come a time, according to Micah, when another one would come from that same little village. And all of life would be different when this one comes. This one who will come forth from this little village of Bethlehem will come forth for God's sake, the text says. This one who is coming forth at that particular point there in that particular place in Bethlehem will come forth 
at a particular time in history, but he will come forth from of old, the text says. He'll be coming from ancient days. You see, Jesus Christ was made incarnate there in Bethlehem around the year, I guess we would call it zero, the first year of our Lord. He was born there in that little village, but he comes forth from eternity past. Jesus Christ has always been in the heart of God. Jesus Christ is true God of true God. Jesus Christ is God incarnate, God in the flesh. And that's why I think the prophet Micah says that even though he's going to come at a particular point from the city of Bethlehem, he will really be coming from of old, from eternity past. He'll be coming from the ancient of days. In the beginning was the Word, John's Gospel says, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So there really is no beginning to the Word, but the Word took flesh and dwelt among us when God became incarnate in that simple little small village of Bethlehem. And that was God coming to live among us. And in prophet, the prophet Micah says, then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. The rest of his brothers will somehow be dispersed, but then somehow they will be regathered again. And this one from Bethlehem, this one who is coming to rule and reign, this one who begins a rule and reign in the hearts of his followers, there at his first coming, will come a second time and establish the majesty of his kingdom. And all of his people will be regathered at that point, will be gathered to him, and he, this one who is to come, he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And at this point, when this one who is to come from Bethlehem will eventually come in glory and power and majesty and establish his kingdom, and that kingdom will be great to the ends of the earth, according to the prophet Micah. And at that point, he shall be their peace. Those are tremendous words from the prophet Micah. And he penned those words 700 years before the Son of God took flesh there in Bethlehem. And Micah summarizes who this one to come will be by saying, and he shall be their peace. When I hear Micah saying this, I'm reminded of Jesus there in the upper room looking to his distraught followers and saying to them, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This one who is to come from Bethlehem will be our peace. I'm reminded of how Paul said it in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. Paul just simply says at that point, he, Jesus, he is our peace. Everyone in this world is looking for peace, I think. Some people are almost violently, isn't that ironic, looking for peace in this world. And people look for this peace in a lot of different places, in a lot of different ways. People think that perhaps politics can bring us the peace that we seek. Some people think that perhaps education can bring us the peace that we're seeking. Some people think the military and military might can be the bringer of this peace. Some people look to science to be the bringer of this peace. Some people seek to fill their lives with material things, hoping that somehow by filling that vacuum in their hearts that they will find the peace for which they seek. And none of these are bad things in and of themselves, but they're impotent to bring the peace that we're seeking. I believe everyone is looking for peace because we find peace to be so elusive here in this world. As Christians, we know the one who is peace himself. 
We know the one who is the bringer of peace. We know the one who is the prince of peace. And part of our task, part of our ministry, part of our calling as Christians in this world is help other people know what it is, or I guess I should say who it is they're looking for. A lot of people are seeking for peace, and they don't even know that is what they're doing. They're frenetically trying to fill their lives with something that somehow can quench that yearning in their hearts. We're the people here in the world who can help the rest of the world understand what it is they're looking for. And we can point them to the one who is the true bringer of peace in the midst of all the chaos and the tumult and the turmoil that has been written as our history. We know, we know to look to the Prince of Peace. And we know that the Prince of Peace can do a work in our hearts right now. We know that the Prince of Peace can do a work in our lives right now. And we look forward to that day when the Prince of Peace will do his great work of bringing peace to all of humanity. And the kingdom of God will become on this earth just as it is already right now today in heaven. And it is the Prince of Peace who is bringing peace into this world. We're looking for peace. I believe everyone's looking for peace. And we cannot keep that great good news to ourselves, my friends. We have to help others find their way to the great bringer of peace. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, a great preacher of the 19th century, was but a teenager when he was wandering through the countryside. He was struggling through a snowstorm, and he decided to take refuge in a little primitive Methodist church in Colchester, England. And he went in and he heard the preacher of the day who was but a simple man and he was preaching the text Isaiah 45 verse 22 which simply says, Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. And that simple Methodist preacher there in that Methodist chapel seemed to preach right at the young Charles Haddon Spurgeon encouraging the young Charles Haddon Spurgeon to look unto Jesus, to look unto Jesus and be saved and to seek salvation, deliverance, salvaging, peace in the one that can bring it into our lives, the one who can knit our lives together into a coherent whole, the one that can bring meaning and life into our living. So that simple Methodist preacher told Charles Haddon Spurgeon, Look unto Jesus, look unto Jesus, look unto Jesus. And that has to be the consistent, constant message of the Christian community. We can become so distracted with so many of the good things in the world, and sometimes we're distracted by the bad things in the world. We live in a world now with a 24-7 news cycle, and it's so easy to be distracted. But we know, church, that we are the ones who need to help others realize what it is, who it is that they are seeking. Look unto Jesus. He is our peace. He is called our peace. He is the bringer of our peace. And we point people to that peace. And for us in the Christian faith, peace is not simply the absence of strife and I know in this world in which we live sometimes we would settle for that just the absence of strife but for us peace is so much more peace or the Hebrew word shalom means more than just simple absence of strife it means harmony and wholeness and completeness spiritual prosperity spiritual welfare and an inward tranquility. Jesus is the one that can bring this to our lives. Jesus is the one that can knit together the loose ends of our life to make it all work together. 
Jesus is the one that can do a work in our life far more than we can think or imagine. But we have to look to Him, and we have to continue to gaze upon Him and see that He's not just the gift of Christmas. He is the gift to the human race that sets all things right. Is Jesus the bringer of our peace. My friends, I want to offer you a challenge during the Advent season. I want you to join me and let's focus on this Jesus. I encourage you to simplify your life. I encourage you to declutter your Advent season, your approach to Christmas. Declutter Christmas itself. I encourage you to to take this Advent season and allow it to become a time of preparation for Christmas to be born in your heart, for Jesus Christ to be born anew in your life. I encourage you to simplify things and focus. I know it's hard in our distracting world, but focus on Jesus Christ. Focus on the worship of Jesus Christ. Focus on prayer and reflection. Let some of the good things go that fill our calendar. Simplify your life. Focus on Jesus Christ. Focus on the things that really matter in life. Focus on your family. Focus on those people that God has given you to love. And come together and come together in such a way that you really are coming together around Jesus. Because He is the one that can bring peace to you and to those people that you, that you love. So my friends, it is amazing to hear these words from Micah, who 700 years before the coming of Jesus painted a picture of this one that is to come from God, come from of old, be born in that little village of Bethlehem to rule in this world, to shepherd us, to bring us safety and security, and above all, to bring us peace. I pray that you will find some breathing room during this, during this Advent season as we prepare for the coming of Christmas. I pray that you'll find some breathing room so that the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, can breathe new life into you. Amen.
Thank you, friends, for worshiping with us today at Wesley Memorial Church. We're delighted that you have allowed us to be part of your Advent journey. During the Advent season, we have some wonderful activities here through our congregation. We have some wonderful children's activity, particularly our great gingerbread bash that is coming up on December the 11th. You can check out the information concerning that children's event on our website. We also are going to have a drive through nativity here on our campus on December the 19th. And then we'll have four wonderful worship services on Christmas Eve filled with great music that will help us receive the gift of Christmas and allow the spirit of Christmas to be born anew in our lives. We invite you to participate with any of our in-person worship experiences or upcoming Advent celebrations. Thank you again for worshiping with us today. And now may the grace of God, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. Amen. Thank you.